Welcome, folks. So I wanted to describe how you can use persistent homology, whatever that is, to measure the shape of a data set. All right, so if I show you a picture in 2D or 3D of a data set, you might be able to um, squint your eyes and say, well, it looks like this data set was sampled from a sphere with some sort of hourglass glued inside. And and humans are quite good at that in 2D, right? You can just blur your vision and say, we think these points were maybe sampled from a circle with noise. Um, in higher dimensions, like if this was a data set of point in 24 dimensional space, humans are very bad at blurring their vision in 24 dimensional space, right? I mean, each point I just give you a list of 24 numbers, you can't, you can't see anything if I give you this data set in matrix form you know, each column being a different data point and, and each column containing 24 different rows in it if it's a data set in, in 24 dimensional space. Fortunately, we can teach computers to help us do data analysis in higher dimensions. So in higher dimensions, still grow balls around your data points, but on your computer, store a vertex for each data point an edge whenever the two balls around those two data points intersect and um, put in a triangle whenever data points have, three data points have a, have a point of triple intersection. Okay. So this collection of vertices, edges and triangles and tetrahedron, you can store on your computer as you, as you grow the balls. All right. So when you compute persistent homology, the output are these barcodes. And you have a zero dimensional barcode, which corresponds to zero dimensional holes or connected components. And you have a one dimensional barcode that corresponds to one dimensional holes or loops. And similarly, you have a two dimensional barcode that I haven't drawn for this example. All right. So we have this scale that's sort of increasing from left to right. The balls are getting bigger and bigger. And as that happens, our 20 connected components that we maybe have right here start to merge up. And then maybe we only have 18 connected components. And then maybe down to 13 connected components. And eventually things keep merging up until at, at this scale right here, we, we now have only one connected component. Do you see that? So now everything's fully connected at, at this scale right here. Okay. Um, and, and things remain connected forevermore. There's just one connected component. Let's look at one dimensional homology. So at this scale right here, we don't have any one dimensional holes. But now by the time we get to this scale, we do have two one-dimensional holes, one of them right here, and the other one is sort of this small, noisy one-dimensional hole. When I increase the scale to get to here, you'll notice that this small one-dimensional hole got filled in, okay? So that's why this bar, which corresponded to a one-dimensional hole, died. It died because, you know, this one-dimensional hole didn't continue. From, from this scale and to the, to the next one. By contrast, this one dimensional hole, which is represented by this bar, does persist, does persist on, and it's still a, a hole that's not filled in also at this scale. However, by the time we get here, even, even um, this one dimensional hole has gotten filled in, and that's why this bar ends before the scale. So you'll remember that homology counts the number of holes in each dimension. Persistent homology tracks the number of holes in each dimension as the scale changes. So the scale is increasing from right to left. Connected components are merging up and that's what the zero dimensional homology measures. One dimensional features get born, right? There's two one dimensional features that get born um, right near this scale. One of them is a small hole that, that disappears quite quickly. And the other one is a larger hole 
that persists for more scales. And from this barcode, you could recover the number of holes in each dimension at any scale just by slicing the barcode. So slice here to see I have one connected component and one one-dimensional hole in this space. Or slice here to see that I have one connected component or two one-dimensional holes in this space. Yeah. Um, but homology, persistent homology tracks no, not only the number of holes of each dimension at each scale, but also how they map together. Persistent homology tracks that this one-dimensional hole that I had right here is really the same one-dimensional hole as this one I had there. So why don't we stop my rambling here? This is an algorithm that you can do relatively efficiently on your, on your computer. It's called persistent homology, and you track the number of holes in each dimension as some space is grown. Public questions. Um, if it's not too complicated, can you talk about what a computer can do to recognize an n-dimensional hole? So uh, I'm going to give you sort of the cheating answer, Sam, because it is a little bit complicated. Um, but it, it boils down to linear algebra. And in particular, it boils down to Gaussian elimination. So you know, Gaussian elimination is a way to take a matrix and to put it in reduced row echelon form. And it turns out from the reduced row echelon form of a particular matrix, you can read off what the, um, what the homology is, what the uh, number of holes in each dimension are. Now, a great question is, what is the matrix you're even talking about? Well, you can build what are called boundary matrices that show how the one-dimensional edges are glued to the zero-dimensional vertices. Okay, so you have vertices on one axis of the matrix and edges on the other. Or you have a two-dimensional boundary matrix that maps two-dimensional triangles to one-dimensional edges. And you have a boundary matrix uh, for uh, uh, in, it's going from dimension two to dimension one. And then you also have a three-dimensional boundary matrix that tells you how three-dimensional tetrahedra are glued to two-dimensional triangles. So, so those are the um, matrices that encode the sort of the, um, the structure of these, of these spaces that we've built. And then you're able to do linear algebra on those matrices to recover this homology information. What do you think? Does that make you happy, mad? <laughs> uh, it makes sense, I think. There's more we could chat about here, maybe in this class or outside of class, but uh, other public questions. Can you explain what you mean by scale and what it means to be increasing in scale, maybe in the context uh, yes. of actually having a data set? Or is that yeah, too perfect. abstract? No, 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 no. That's a great question. So. Scale, I really mean the radius of these balls. So as you blur your vision, you might be, mathematically, you might say, I just, um, the way I blur my vision for this data set is I, I put a ball around each data point and I blur my, my vision by increasing the size of the ball. So th that's a scale, the radius of the ball. Okay. I see. Right. And then- So in the images on your, uh previous slide of the increasing scale, is a line being drawn between them when the balls overlap? Oh, you mean like, um, when do I say like that it's the same hole? Or, oh, no, 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 I see what you're saying. You're saying when are these, um, you're saying when are these edges drawn? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you nailed it. You you draw an edge between two data points when the balls overlap. Gotcha. And then you you don't draw an edge when the balls don't don't overlap. Okay. Um, and similarly for the triangle, so you you draw this triangle when there's a point of triple intersection. 
and you you don't draw that triangle when there's no point of triple intersection, even if you have all the edges, because you know here we have all pairwise mm. intersections, but we don't have the triple intersection, so we we don't um, glue in that triangle because we don't want to fill in this hole, right? That's currently I present. see. Okay. Yeah. yeah thanks. Yeah, so the, the, the balls are maybe how you think of data sets when you just look at it, a picture in 2D or 3D. And then these vertices and edges and triangles are what you actually store in a computer. But they, they, um, they're the same shape up to homotopy equivalents that we've talked about a little bit. So the, the union of the blue balls is the same shape up to homotopy equivalents as you know all these vertices, edges, edges and, and triangles glued together. You know, just imagine like pushing the blue balls in, right? Pushing in and collapsing down onto the onto the red shape. Great questions. Other public questions. Thanks so much.